One of the American military's top generals is speaking out about intelligence reports that suggest Russia may have paid the Taliban to kill U.S. troops. The head of U.S. Central Command, General Frank McKenzie, says he found the intelligence worrisome, but is not convinced that any bounties resulted in the deaths of U.S. troops. Tomorrow, the House Foreign Affairs Committee will hold a hearing to discuss those reports of Russian bounties, where Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has been called on to testify. CBS News intelligence and national security reporter Olivia Gossis joins us now. Olivia, good to see you again. There's a lot to discuss. Before we get to tomorrow's hearing, I want to talk about Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's announcement on U.S. visa restrictions for Chinese officials who have blocked American diplomats and journalists from entering Tibet. What is prompting the administration's interest in Tibet? A very good question, Elaine. What is prompting the interest in Tibet in particular, by all appearances, seems to be that it's another source of tension with China, uh, with whom the United States has had a deteriorating relationship now for months. As you mentioned, the announcement involves uh, restrictions on Chinese Communist Party officials who work to obstruct access for U.S. persons into Tibet. We don't know who those officials are. We don't know how many are affected. Uh, but the, but the uh, administration has said that it wants uh, meaningful autonomy for Tibet, which, as a reminder, the Chinese have effectively controlled since the 1950s, although Tibetans have fought for their own independence as well. Uh, Really, the more meaningful backdrop here uh, is the is the sort of simmering series of tensions that the United States has had with China over the past series of months. Uh, there, there are battlefronts opened on any number uh, of topics. One is trade. One is allegations of widespread economic espionage that China engages in in the United States. One is the future of the social media platform TikTok. Uh, one is, of course, China's recent crackdown on Hong Kong. Uh, one is, of course, probably the most meaningful one, uh, the, uh, the handling of the coronavirus pandemic and how it is spread. Uh, from China and uh, been handled by the officials there. Uh, so really, this is just the opening of one more battlefront uh, with China, one more way that you, the U.S. can make life a little bit harder for officials there and using Tibet uh, as one more issue where they can dig in. Hmm. Well, let's turn to this upcoming hearing. Secretary Pompeo is invited to the House Foreign Affairs hearing tomorrow. Is there any chance he or anyone else in the administration will testify? As of right now, we don't have any indication that uh, the secretary will testify, nor that any other current administration official will make an appearance. Uh, instead, what lawmakers are expected to hear uh, are from a set of four former senior national security officials, uh, one of them most notably uh, General John Nicholson, who was the former U.S. commander uh, in Afghanistan and who's on the record speaking out about Russian misbehavior in the region as far back as 2018. He called out the Russians for providing material Material support to the Taliban uh, back then. And so he can sort of lay the groundwork as to whether this kind of program would mark an escalation in Russian misbehavior or if it's sort of more of the same. Uh, the committee is also expected to hear from the former CIA acting and deputy director Michael Morell, uh, who is a CBS News uh, a national security contributor. Uh, Morell is expected to lay out something of the intelligence life cycle, so answering questions like, how often and how broadly is raw intelligence disseminated? Who receives it? How does the intelligence community collect it, analyze it, uh, come to any sort of consensus or, or, or have a discussion about it? And of course, crucially, at what point does it get escalated and meet the president's desk? Uh, you know, that has sort of become a, a crucial question that lawmakers are grappling with uh, as they consider what the policy responses could be or should have been from this administration. And Olivia, I know you have sources in the intelligence community. What are people in the national security community saying about these allegations of Russia paying bounties on U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan? Well, Elaine, you mentioned before, and I think it's notable that the top commander, uh, the current top commander in Afghanistan overseeing operations there and in the Middle East, uh, General Frank McKenzie, did speak to reporters and say that he had seen this intelligence that even though it wouldn't, quote, hold up in court, it was nonetheless very worrisome. And we know that it did affect force postures there. Uh, he did also say, very importantly, that at this stage, we don't know of any U.S. casualties that may have resulted from the bounty 
program. We know that matter is still under investigation, and we know that there's still an open question as to whether any coalition troops may have lost their lives uh, as a real result of this program. More broadly, uh, you did see something of a spate of, uh, of, of op-eds from former national security officials who, it's worth noting, served in both Democratic and Republican administrations. Uh, pushing back to the extent there was a unifying theme, they pushed back most forcefully on this line from the administration that intelligence doesn't really make it to the president um, uh, if it's, quote, unverified or uncorroborated or lacks consensus. Uh, almost to a one, these officials have been saying uh, intelligence by its nature is is imperfect. It's by its nature almost always incomplete. Uh, and when it has to do with the lives and livelihoods of American troops, more often than not, it would be flagged to the president. Uh, on, on the topic of briefing, we actually did get some rare remarks from the president's daily briefer, Beth Sanner, who is a senior CIA official, a career official. Uh, you'll recall she was the one singled out by National Security Advisor uh, O'Brien as being the person who made the decision not to pr uh, brief the president based on the fact that this intelligence was allegedly uncorroborated. Uh, she didn't address those comments in particular. She was speaking at an, an unrelated event. She didn't even mention the president by name, but she nonetheless said some things that were pretty illustrative of how she approaches her job. Uh, she said it was incumbent on briefers to really understand their audiences uh, to, to if they if they like pictures, give them pictures. If they like stories, tell them stories. Uh, and probably most crucially, if they've tuned out, you don't get to go on. In her words, if they're done, you're done. Really interesting comments. All right, Olivia Gaza, it's always great to have your insight. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Elaine.